Hey, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, this is Joe and Jay Outspoken. Remember to follow all of our platforms, and you can find them by going to Linktree forward slash Joe and Jay Outspoken. Today's show is for Tuesday, September 5th. I'm Jay, and today Joe and I are going to be discussing Trump-era politics, how it affected the landscape from the day he descended down the escalator to the current administration and its drive to keep him out of the White House in 2024. All right, Joe. Are we ready for this one? I'm ready to talk about my dad. Let's talk about pops. <laughs> All right. Do Everybody, let's, let's jump on the Trump train. Yeah. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, this is Joe and Jay Outspoken. And um, thanks to everybody for the for last week's episode. It was really great. We had some uh, cool comments that came through and everything. So we're going to do a second part to that eventually here. And we'll announce that a little later. But um, yeah, here we are. Yes, so, um, we are. So, so what's going on with daddy? Huh? Well, <laughs> daddy's fine. Dad's alive and kicking. He's doing good. You know? Back in uh, Mar a Largo, doing fine. But, you know, here's the thing I want to really talk about. You know, so, you know, we see all these things going on. People on the left are, are excited and happy. People on the right, oddly enough, are, are excited and happy, right? <laughs> all this stuff is going on. Um, but so, what I want to do is I want to let's take a look back before Trump was president, when he was president, and today. Right. Let, let's kind of compare and see what, what was going on. Right. People always say it's like, well, he destroyed this country uh, and before that. Obama did great things and blah, blah, blah. But, but did he? But did he really do great things? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, and now we got all kinds of stuff happening now. Right. We got some some weird emails from the vice president uh, back then, which was Joe Biden um, with this whole Hunter thing. So how well off were we before Biden? Right. Pre pre Trump. I mean, how well were we? So in looking up at some of the things uh, in the final year of Obama, um, let me just read you some stats. America's Americans trust in the national political leaders struck its lowest level in the final year. of Obama's presidency standing at 42 percent uh, in 20 in 2009. That fear was 49 percent. Wow. So so. The trust had already started falling. This is before Trump came in. Okay. So what 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 else? What else, Joe? You ask? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> what else, uh, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> so confidence in the Supreme Court and Congress sunk to record lows in 2014 at 30% and 7% respectively. So wow. that that's a big especially in the Supreme Court. That's a big drop, right? Again, yeah. this is before Trump ever nominated anybody to the Supreme Court. Right. Right. Uh, this was all pre Trump. So throughout the past eight years, Congress continuously received dismal approval ratings, dropping to a yearly low of 14 percent approval in 2013. By December 2016, little improvement had taken place, which with approval standings at 17 percent. That's horrible. Wow. Uh, um, so here's another one. Obama's job approval rating tended to fare be, uh, better than that of Congress, as typically is the case when comparing the president to Congress. But Obama's average approval rating over his two terms ranks among the lowest in Gallup history. Lowest in Gallup history. Lowest in Gallup history. So why do you think that was it? I mean, why do you think that? Why, why do you think that was like everything going down? You can't blame Trump for that. Clearly. Right. It wasn't Trump's fault. Right. Um, so what was were people finally waking up after, what, eight years of Obama where people starting to see is like, wait a minute. Did he you know what he he didn't. What do you do? You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. That's my question that I pose to you. What do you, what do you think about those those stats? About those figures? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the. And I've said this for years, you know, when people would say they, you know, because if, if there's, if I want to give him a kudos, mm -hmm. he was probably a more eloquently spoken 
president, right? Yeah. We had come off the heels of uh, uh, Bush Jr. that was, you know, only a couple steps above our current administration <laughs> and, you know, just said the dumbest things and uh, just sounded super uneducated. Um, and then you have, you know, Obama that walks in and, and um, has a much more, like I said, eloquent way of speaking about things. One of the things that he campaigned on in the very beginning, like I was saying, um, uh, one of the things I've said over and over, he campaigned on the, in the, on the campaign trail that he wanted to shut down Getmo, right? That it was a, oh, yeah. you know, humanitarian disaster kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like for, for the general public to understand what that is, that's where the biggest, you know, it's supposed to be where the biggest war criminals and people like that are, uh, held and it's you know you don't want them in a general pop um and you could probably speak to this way better you know as far as uh jailing and everything that's not a standard jail it's not a standard prison that's really for the worst of the worst in the world uh that are there now i didn't agree those are world terrorists these are terrorists world terrorists that, yeah, yeah yeah people that not just for the united states but for the like world all kinds yeah for the whole world for countries that they would you know attack or do stuff so anyhow i didn't agree with him wanting to close it but that was one of the things that he campaigned on day one when i get in there uh, uh I'm, I'm gonna you know close that thing down and here it is eight years later and none of that was done and you know these so again if somebody voted for him for that reason um, they were probably pretty disappointed yeah. and there were so many other things, you know, you have people of color that, um, one of the number one reasons they voted for him was because he was a person of color. And it's like, Hey, we're going to have somebody that represents us in the big office finally, because obviously all these old crusty <laughs> white guys, you know, in uh -huh. the past haven't represented us and how we feel and everything we go through. And all of these folks, you know, I mean, if you look at um, statistics and everything on it, it was almost a hundred percent voting for him, right? right? There wasn't anybody voting opposed to him, uh, uh, people of color. So, and you know, tons of white people voted for him too. I mean, he wouldn't have won if none of the vo none of the white people liked him, right? So, right. right. Um, so he gets into office and does nothing <laughs> for people of color, nothing, you know, and. I mean, if there's one or two things in the background that he did, because I'm sure somebody's going to comment and say, oh, well, he did this one thing for him. And it's like, that kind of sucks, because if you can only drum up one or two things that he did, and then you fast forward to uh, 2016, and the next president comes in that was the racist that doesn't like people of color, and one after another, he's doing things for, you know, especially black folks, you know, um, but people of color in general, and people in general, because the one of the biggest things for him, Native Americans again, as well, is for Americans, right? It doesn't matter the color of your skin. You're American. If you if you yourself say, well, I don't feel like I'm an American. Well, that's a, that's up to you to not yeah. feel that way. You know, um, we we do not have. I heard somebody the other day on the news, and they they said, um, you know, that people of and I could not believe this would even be spoken by anybody they said people of color nowadays especially black people have it worse today in this country than in the days of slavery i saw i was that. like i saw i that. was like how can you even remote that is so ignorant and disrespectful to people of those days that had to go through all of that you know and you're minimizing it now now you're minimizing yeah. what they went through Right. And this was <laughs> this was somebody that was white that said that. And I'm like, how dare you say something like that? Or you got to put people in control, take your people and get them. In control. <laughs> They're not my people. <laughs> and, um, you know, how disrespectful, because, you know, people of especially black people now, their ancestry, their uh, family that had actually dealt with slavery and had to go through that. Those people fought tooth and nail to get their children to where they are today. So the thing is, is like, you know, wherever, whatever color you are, wherever you come from, whatever country you're from, uh, um, your parents wanted a better life for you, right? No matter what your parents wanted a better life for you. What kind of respect are you showing them now in your daily activities, your daily life, your da daily appreciation to everything 
uh, by your daily actions, what kind of appreciation are you showing to your ancestry? And, you right. know, a lot of people are, their ancestors would be like deathly ashamed of <laughs> everything they're doing now. And, um, uh, what's his name? Obama's, uh, brother. He's like, he doesn't even like him. He doesn't agree with him, you know? No, he doesn't. Well, no, because he, you know, he, he He's got, let me tell you something about Obama. Obama has the gift uh, uh, of being able to speak well. He's a, he's a good speaker. Uh, you he's know, I'll give awesome, him that. He's an awesome politician. Exactly. My dad, on the other hand, has Trump, uh, had <laughs> absolutely, you've, you've seen his, his shows, right? You've seen his shows. Right. Yeah. They, they, the guy's harsh. He's hard to, you know what I mean? He's just, oh, yeah. he's very awkward, very awkward. Right. You know, when you, when you're raised kind of in a, in a, 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 um, rich family like that, you know, you're, 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 you're kind of isolated, you know? Yeah. And, and you don't have those, those social, um, exchanges with people, normal people, us poor right. folk, you know, that, that, that create that bond. Right. So he didn't yeah. have that. So he's really socially, he's awkward. He is very awkward. Oh, he is. Yeah. He, his, his personality type is, is not super palatable, <laughs> but <know>? here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. And this is, this is what gets me the most is that everyone loved him pre politician. Right. Absolutely. And everyone did. hated him during his political years and now right. post politician and it, the hatred was so huge. And here's the thing about, about look, man, you have every right to dislike somebody. Right? I hate to me yeah. is a very strong emotion. It's, world. It, it's a very, to me, hates a very strong emotion. Like I could, if, if someone did someone to my family, I will hate you. Right. That's that, that's the caliber. But if I don't like someone, that's just, I don't like him. I, I mean, to right. hate somebody. I mean, these people that hate him don't even know him. I mean, to, to even have that emotion of hate, you know, right. um, they're just very sensitive. Let's just say that they're very sensitive people. And because of that, um, everything Trump did got brushed under the rug. No one knows what he did. Right. I mean, we know because yeah. we, you know, we, we followed his politics, but like people that are out there yelling in the street that, you know, put him in jail. This is where he belongs. Ha ha. Those, those people in Hollywood, those producers, those book writers, all them people that are talking all this craziness about him don't know what he did. Right. They, they don't know. Right. Um, and, and that's the problem with today's society is that they base it on their they base someone off their feelings for them, not their acts. Right. Obama right. was just Obama was just a feeling. They're like, oh, my God, he's the first black president. He's going to do so great. Blah, blah, blah. And then he did it. Right. Um, everyone voted Biden. Well, allegedly voted Biden in because <laughs> um Trump was so horrible. Where are we at now? You know, so we, we have to give and take a little bit. We, these are yeah. the things that, that, that people don't understand. So before, again, before Trump, right. Um, there, there was, there was not a lot of division. There wasn't a lot of things going on. If you, if you remember, right. Uh, discrimination has always been around, right. Bigotry is something that we, we can't eradicate, right. Because there's right. people are it's just never going to go away. No, people. people are taught. It's that, never going right? to go It's away. unfortunate yeah. that parents is. teach that. Um, so it's never going to, it's never going to go away. Um, unless we eradicate those parents, right? We can't do right. There was a clear line of division, right? There was the Democrats or the, uh, and the Republicans, right? They had some bipartisan votes. Yeah. Right? Everything was cool and kosher, right? They, they wanted things to work out. Um, but it wasn't divided. I mean, it was, there was a division, right? Very different. There was a line of, there was a clear line of division, the, the, the right and the left. But they were not divided. They they would kind of vote on the same things, right? Right. Um, yeah. Left so, of center, right of center, basically. Yes, exactly. And so everything. So what does that tell you? And before that was the same thing. Before that, and before that, before that. Oh what's, yeah. What's that tell you? That they're politicians, right? They play this game up at the hill. This, 100%. And this is this is this is this is known. This is not you know um, something shocking, right? They'll sit there and criticize Mexican government, but they're doing the same thing, except it's legal here, right? With the yeah. lobbyists and everything else. So, <laughs> right, don't, don't play that game. Um, yeah. But the point is, they were doing. They were playing their roles, Jay. They had their roles. They were stiff in their pockets. They were stiff in the American people, right? And 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 at the same time, big pharma was getting away with charging what. 
six hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars for for EpiPen, right? They were getting away with just crazy stuff because there was absolutely nothing that that I mean, they had some crazy laws that that um, that had gag orders that they couldn't speak about pricing the pharmaceuticals and all that stuff, which yeah. Trump took away. Right. That's right. So, oh, and they but, hated him for uh, it. Hated him for but it. But nobody batted an eye when he did that. Right. They, they still hated him so much. They didn't even realize what he did. Right. So clearly, we knew that politics at the Hill are the same. They've been the same since since Kennedy, and they've been the same up at the end till Obama. Right. It, it right. just it's it's an it's a a wheel getting greased. That's it. You know. Right. Yeah. It keeps growing. And going and going. No one bats an eye. No one says nothing because, you know, eh, it's just a little thing. A little, everyone gets what they want. Their left gets it. The right gets it. They all get a little bit. Everybody washes their hands and we're good to go. Right. Yeah. And then here comes yeah. a non politician, bad mouthing, crazy tweeting, some of them a month. Right. And they come in and, and what's he do? <laughs> he shakes the earth. Right. Yeah. He, he shakes the ground. And what does he say? I'm taking out politicians, bro. I'm taking out left. I'm taking out the right. I don't care who it is. If you're not right. serving this country, you're not serving under me, basically. Right? Yeah. That's, that's what he did. And now people are like, and so why do you think everything turned? Why do you think that it went from normal politics at the Hill every day to all of a sudden here comes Trump? And if you remember, that's when that's when they started doing that division. That's when they started dividing the people, right? Because during the trail campaigns, all of a sudden he's racist. He gropes he, women, right? He all these things are coming out, and what is that doing to the American, to the view of Americans? What is it doing? It's tarnishing. Dividing. It's yeah. dividing them, and it's tarnishing him, right? right. Because that, now that's the only way he's going to win, if we, you know, or he's going to lose. Is we have to tarnish his name, right? Yeah. Because God knows, and this is both sides, because we have rhinos too, right? God knows if this guy makes it to the White House, he's going to get rid of our money maker. He's gonna start. That's, he's gonna start impacting our pockets. We that's a hundred percent what it was. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's what it was. Right. And and, yep. and so now we're now we're we're past the 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 pre-Trump. Now we're at, during Trump. So tell me, what are some of the things you think that you liked about Trump during his era? That I I, I have a list here. That, you know, and I I just want to I want people to understand here some of these things and see if they even remember or know that these things happened during Trump. I think some of the things that were you know really big big for me and and not even so much on a on a personal level it's it's something that i respect a man that gets into office and just like you said you know he he's not a politician and that's why everybody hated him and you got to really stop and think about that for a second so you've got somebody that comes in the office and and say it's forget about trump in particular anyone that would come into that office that is a non political person right yeah. that doesn't doesn't want to play any of the games doesn't want to have anybody and see one of the biggest things is that he came in as a wealthy individual that didn't want to take money bribes whatever you want to call right. it from all these other people everybody that everybody everybody this is a republican this is a democrat independent doesn't matter all of these people that get into office come in making Eighty, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and they leave out of office as multimillionaires. There's no, you can't do. There's no possible way to do that without somebody lying in your pockets in the background, right? Like nobody that has an eighty thousand dollars a year job in five years is going to be a millionaire, right? Multimillionaire. It's just it doesn't happen unless Chapo. you're Chapo had it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. So you have to have some kind of criminal enterprise going on right and that's exactly well, what goes on so so the they thing sat, is, is remember they they sit on boards to some of these companies right. that are being uh oh, that they're yeah. voting certain uh laws on right and right well so, i mean the whole you know pelosi and her husband you know all the stuff that i mean they sell stocks or and or buy stock the day or a couple days prior to something be being voted in or out in congress how in, is that trading, even allowed? Huh? Right. And so, so you and I, we get fined and or go to prison if we look, you got um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Martha Stewart. I love that lady. She sold. Right. She sold some stock because somebody told her, hey, you know what? This stock's probably going to 
falter or whatever. So you should sell it. And she's like, oh, okay. So she sold her stock and they busted her for insider trading. But isn't that what a financial advisor does? And they put her in jail for that. (laughs) Dude, the thing is, is the, these politicians do this half of, they do more than half of Congress and people in the political realm should be in jail and or prison right now for all the nonsense they do. So, um, I agree. And, you know, going back to, uh, what you initially asked things that I really liked about him. Um, one is I liked having a, a, a good economy, you know, where yeah. everything was chipping along. We had lower gas prices. It was much cheaper to uh, get groceries and all those kind of things. But some of the really big things that were beautiful that he did. Um, and, and, you know, it was you know why so we, sad. You, let me ask you real quick. Do you know why we had lower gas prices? Uh, because we had an uh, open system of us pumping oil and everything else out of our country. So I don't know if you know this. In 2018, the United States surpassed Russia and Saudi Arabia in the production of crude oil, making us number one in the world in production of crude oil. Not anymore. And the, but that's that's and the, one of the reasons. That's Sorry. right. Go yeah. Ahead. And well, no, that's good. And uh, the you know the barrel barrels were cost less at that time. So mm-hmm. at that point is when Trump started buying our national reserves at that le- uh, level. Yep. So the country was paying less money, right? So that's our, our tax money, because anytime you say, "Oh, the you know the government will pay for it," okay, you are the government's bank. All right, you are their payday loan. Um, they uh, they started buying all the oil mm-hmm. reserves at that lower price, so we would have that for whatever time of war or you know th- when things actually happen. Or a horrible president. Or a horrible president. Well, it's not meant to be used like they used it. The only <laughs> reason don't. they've used it is is to, to keep the prices down. Keep the prices down. The problem is, is that now, guess what? They're having to refill the oil reserves and guess at what price they're doing it at. You already know. You go to the pump right now. Is it more expensive than it was four years ago? It absolutely is. Yes. And the government has to pay those same prices for that. So so that's a that's a big one. Another thing, and I know people didn't, a lot of people didn't like this, and the media spun it really horribly. Um, so Trump talked so much mess to uh kim jong-un in north korea you know called him little rocket man and all these kind of things but he finally got an agreement with them to meet at the dmz right north and in south korea there had never been a president go there and and he walked across and shook hands and they stood back like you got him. This is the president of the United States. I don't care I believe if you hate was, him or I love believe, him. I believe there was no secret service with him either. They were in, you know, farther in the back. But yeah. he literally walked across. Kim Jong Un walked across there. Now they had their guards in the back and right. everything. Those two men, right? Whatever you think about them, finally met, and we had a a time of peace that we didn't worry about North Korea anymore. Remember, remember, everybody said, "Oh my God." Trump is going to get us into World War Three. North Korea is going to bomb us. That was the most peaceful time. Never started a war. We never started us. a war under, no, under Trump. No, there was, there was wars going on that had already been started by the Obamas and by the Bushes. Right. Those people. But no new wars. Started no new wars people. were started during Trump. No new wars. Not a single one. And and he, he got that settled down so you don't have this North Korean you know dictator going crazy against us he stopped all of his nuclear testing imagine that and guess what they started doing since the new regime has been in the white house started testing again right he also signed the abraham accords right so we the middle east has been in a war war for years for 2000 years right and it's it's one of those things that you know you can that's a whole nother discussion about ideology and everything those folks have been fighting over the same pieces of dirt for 2000 years. And he went over there and got all of these people to peacefully sign for stuff. He got us out of the nonsensical, um, Iranian, uh, you know, what was it for the, uh, nuclear testing and mm-hmm. all that. He got us out of that. Cause that thing was crazy. I mean, they had already sent, I don't even know how much money they sent to those pallets of money, you know, sent to, uh, Iran to, <laughs> It's just ridiculous. 
these are these countries that that finance terrorism 100 mm -hmm. right um if you look at iran's money and where that stuff flows to there's terrorist organizations that are completely backed by this country so i mean it'd be so for people that are out there they're like we we don't agree with you guys we disagree with you okay so like you guys all heard of the proud boys right they yep. are supposedly the right side the republicans whatever you want to say trump supporters yada yada imagine they grow to triple in size there's a 50, 100,000 of these guys all running around the country. And the United States decides to start backing them and sending them money to keep them going. What would you consider that? Well, that would be us funding a terrorist organization. Yeah. I don't think they're terrorists, and, you, you know, but a lot of people that are on the left definitely do. So if we wouldn't fund them, why would it be okay for us to be sending money to Iran and, and them just you know, fund these uh, terrorist organizations and stuff. And the thing is, is that all of this money gets filtered, right? Totally gets filtered through, we're going to do it for this reason. And then it gets, goes elsewhere. Um, just like all the environmental stuff, right? All that money that is going to save the environment is not going to save the environment. It's going to go to a hundred other things uh, rather than, you know, and you can even look it up. The vice president or ex president or whatever, Greenpeace, he, he's even saying now, all of this stuff has been a money grab, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty insane. Pretty insane. And, and, but here's the thing. So I, of course people don't know that he was nominated. He's been nominated several times before the presidency. And even during the presidency, it was nominated for the Nobel peace prize. One of them was because of the Abraham Accords that, um, he did. Oh yeah. And, uh, of course he didn't win it. I think he lost it to some uh, humanitarian effort of right. uh, food or something. I don't know what it was. Um, but again, he did great things. He also signed, uh, bills that three bills that benefited native Americans. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. for all you little potheads out there, he also signed the hemp <laughs> and CBD bill, making it legal. Yeah. Right. Um, and of course he brought us, he finalized the sixth branch of the military, right? The space force, which is, you know, awesome. And for you animal lovers out there, right, that hate Trump because he's evil, um, he actually signed into law uh, the making any cruelty to animals a federal felony. Yes. If you remember that. Yep. He made it a federal yep. felony for cruelty to yep. animals. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's going to win some people over. Nah. Mm -mm. Nah. Because it never got publicized. I no. guarantee you there's people, I guarantee you there's people that are supporters or at least like him or what have you that will watch this. They don't even know that, no. um, the, you know, that he signed those yeah. things in. Why? Because all of that stuff that was good that he did, they don't want to publicize any of that, you know? Mm -mm. And, uh, of you know, not, one of the big one, things, it'll miss up that, that narrative they have of him. Right, right, right. Because he has a dark cloud over his head. And listen, guys out there, haters. Um, you know, there he's has has he said silly things? Did he tweet dumb stuff? Absolutely. Who cares? You know? But who cares? Yeah, exactly. I have said this Clinton over and got, over. Clinton got freaky <laughs> with Monica in the White House. <laughs> no one better than I, right? No, you know what? And and Come personally. On. I mean, I was proud of him. I don't like, I ride my man. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> you see no, his wife, I, right? Uh, man, I I don't anyway, know. If sorry. I been able to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, sorry. we got to keep we got to keep their name out of this whole thing because uh, I want to be able to do this next month. And <laughs> oh yeah. So right. just so, just so you guys know, neither one of us are suicidal or anything like that. Okay? Yeah. No, yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. So, and I remember when that whole thing happened with Bill Clinton and, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't a Bill Clinton hater or anything like that, but that happened. And I was like, that was really stupid of him to do that and get caught, you know, and in the white house and everything. But you know, if you voted for him, did you vote for him because he's a good guy and he's his wife and him, this and that. No, you vote for him because he's going to do a good job right, in office. Right. And exactly. you know, th this is the thing is that, um, we're, you know, when you're in high school, who gets prom king and prom queen? Is it the best student? Is it the person that, you know, attends church or does the most stuff for their community? No, most no popular it's one. the two most popular people in school. And, and it, sometimes, 
no, it's never nerds. Or the band geeks. And it's no, not stupid band geeks. <laughs> it's Just uh, kidding. it's it's always the most popular people, right? Yeah. So it's a popularity contest, and that's all this ends up being with with folks. And how do you create popularity? Well, either by boosting the person that you want in office or degrading the people, the person you don't want in office. I am super convinced. I know everybody's like the elections were cheated. They went out and ballot harvested more, blah, 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 back and forth. I am 100 percent convinced that nobody voted for Joe Biden. People voted against Trump. Yeah. They hated Trump so much they either didn't go and vote. So lost that vote completely from the year prior or the four uh, four years ago prior, or um, they voted for the other guy just so they yep. could say, you know, give it to Trump. Like, yeah. I'm going to like not vote for you. They didn't, nobody voted for Joe Biden. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple of dum-dums out there that are, you know, in a bumping into corners right now, but um, uh, he was so disliked and, and there had been just this media, firestorm right of just all the money that has been thrown at him because you think about one media outlet and i don't like any of the media outlets uh but you think about one media outlet how much does it cost to run that right just the building all the people that are there everything ton of money so name me a large media outlet that was conservative bound everybody's going to say the same thing fox news fox news out there they're one-sided this and that okay fine which is not totally true because if you look at them now, they're Murdoch they're follows kinda, Murdoch follows the money too. Yeah, they're gonna right. I mean, they all they all follow the money. Yeah. Now name me places that are that are not conservatively bound. You know, it's quite a few of them. MSNBC and CNN. You're at least two to one on that whole thing, and you can add a bunch of other you know local stations, and of course you got the chicken heads at the View and all those kind of um, you know channels and all these other things all of this money and this power and this you know talking points are going towards one thing putting this guy in the grave i mean they really just want to um you know destroy his yeah yeah they want to destroy his his persona as much as possible so you, you said you said something in the beginning i mean before all of this all of these people loved him Oprah loved him. All the black rappers and and all the the Jesse Jacksons of the world. He was on the you know, View. Remember? Yeah, he was on the View. Yeah, yeah. And they liked him. They loved him back so, then. But yeah. here's, let me tell you. Finish telling you some things here. So this is and this is crazy, right? Coming from like the Mister Mister uh, Racist and like uh, stuff like that, right? You have every year that he was in office, violent crimes dropped. Mm -hmm. That's after they rose two years prior to him taking office, right? They rose. So the two years prior to him taking office, who was there? Obama. Violent crimes rose. But when he takes office, violent crime dropped every year he was in office. What's that tell you, man? You know, he supported first responders. He, he, he was tough on, on real criminals, right? Sex traffickers, uh, murderers. He was tough on those things. Yeah. Here's another thing to all you green lovers, right? The save the earth lovers out there. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the EPA under Trump administration gave a hundred million dollars to Flint, Michigan to fix her water infrastructure. Okay, we all know there's you don't drink the water in Flint, right? Even I know that, right? Um, but he gave that to them. The EPA under his administration did that. I mean, did you hear that? Anything about that? I didn't know about that until I was, we were, I was researching for this episode. I never knew he did that. I'm like, he gave a hundred million dollars. Has he been down to Flint, Michigan? They they pocket that money. I don't know what happened to it, but anyway, um, he 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 did that, right? Also, earlier, remember I told you. He signed a law ending gag orders on on pharmacists that prevented them from sharing money saving uh, information. Yep, right, because they the had what? placed the gag order on there, and under right. under his administration, he signed a law ending that gag order, right, and and uh, which helped the cost come down, and save right? people money. Yeah, yep. which of course your current president is trying to take uh, absolutely credit for, man. you know. Another thing, Trump signed. Let me. I have to read this one off because um, 
it's very important. And this is something that all those people out there that, that saw um, the sound of freedom said, oh, that's that's just a QAnon um, <laughs> wow. a theory, uh, you know, conspiracy theory. That's not true. Sex trafficking isn't true. That's not happening. Okay. But anyway, Trump signed the Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, which includes the Stop, and Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, Act, which both give law enforcement and victims new tools to fight sex trafficking. That was a big push that he did through Congress to get that signed. Um, and that changed so much. That changed so yep. many things. Law enforcement was able to start doing more, use more tools to get those sex traffickers, get them out and get them arrested, get them identified, you know, and possibly stop right. more of our children from getting kidnapped and into this horrible uh, life of sex trafficking. Um, he also signed a bill to require airports to provide spaces uh, for breastfeeding moms, bro. Yeah. I mean, th simple things yep. like I this. I remember that. Yeah. You're like, come on, guys. The 25% lowest paid Americans enjoyed a 4.5 income boost in November 2019, which outpaces a 2.9 gain in earnings from the country's highest paid workers. I mean, but is that ever talked about? Do we ever no, no, they won't say be. anything about that? <laughs> Do they say, oh, yeah, no, it's all right. You know what? That that's 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 nothing compared to all the bad that he did. Like what what bad did he do? I mean, he didn't do really. He's I mean, what, some bad tweets, nasty tweets. I, I yeah. mean, like, bro, get over the tweets. You know what I mean? Get over yeah. it. So now let's talk about post Trump. What has happened since <laughs> he left the presidency? <laughs> right. So dumpster fire. Oh, my God. So here, here, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, it's been crazy, right? Because now like. Everything's run amok. Everything's gone crazy. You got conservatives turning against conservatives, right? On social media, right? Crazy stuff. L liberals just, they're having a, a party out there. All the, There's a huge division. Um, racial indoctrination, right? Everywhere. Right. Um, no, no, there's no more bipartisan stuff going on, right? Oh, no. It, it's, it's gone to the wayside, right? The Biden's campaign is just a smear campaign. That's all he's been doing, right? And that's and, all he can do. But here's the thing, and this is the most horrible thing that I see. And I'm like, why aren't people seeing this? Why? Why am I this 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 Mexican dude in Michigan see this, and no one else in the world sees this? The the, the fact that he has weaponized the Department of Justice and has made it against his opponent against his opponent. That is, yeah. that is some right there. That is some Hitler shit right there. I'm telling you that right now. That is a communist dictatorship thing going on it right is. there. When, when you, you start to do that thing like that. I mean, when you, you uh, start removing your opponents by jailing, putting them in jail, guys, right. guys, wait, wake up, man. Like here's his son doing all kinds of, crooked stuff out there right dad join in on him right all of a sudden did you hear about these he's got like thousands of these emails under an alias that were used to give government information and stuff for the business with for right. junior um what no, nothing no they you know what they did the national archives sent uh emails to um who was it Obama and Biden asking, uh, give, asking for their permission to release these files. I mean, I think that's a common thing, like, but you do that to the attorneys, right? But wh why, why is no one seeing this? Why, why is Congress so on a standstill with all this information we have? Why has he not been impeached? Why haven't the process even began, right? The, no formal impeachment has proceedings have started or have they? I don't know. Maybe they have in, in one, in one house. I don't know. But what what's happening to our society, man? It's gone to crap, bro. I mean, right? I I, I don't. This is this is the worst I've ever seen in our country, honestly. Um, aside from, um, of course, civil war and wars and things like that. I, I'm talking during right. peacetime. This is this is horrible. This is horrible to see this happening, and uh, and no one really saying much. Everyone's kind of sitting back, and and I get it. We're tired of the politics. At least I am. I'm tired of hearing about all these things happening, about Trump's this, Biden that. I, I care less, bro. 
I, I really could. Um, and I think that's where people are right now. They're like, you know what? Enough's enough. You know, we got other crazy things going on, like Hawaii, right? And and um, and, and right and and different stuff like that. But wh- well, and and there's a great one right there. So, if if let's say currently Trump was the president, okay, let's just for giggles, let's say he was president right now. What do you think would have happened as soon as the fires and everything happened in Hawaii? Trump would have been happened. Trump would have flown down he, there. He would have had water. He, he would have had to, he would have had FEMA down there. They would have had he, they would have had the trailers out there, temporary housing. They would have done what they would normally do when there's a disaster somewhere. FEMA would go into effect, right? The You it, remember there was a couple there was a couple different disasters that have happened that Trump sent his personal water from his hotel pallets, you know. That was that uh, that, to that Lebanon um the derailment. Yeah, he sent yeah. he so sent his on his own plane. of his on his own plane, his own dime, everything. Yeah. These people will beg for money from. So, so here here's one of the one of these things I want to ask. So, I me personally, and this is obviously I'm being stupid right now, but I want to pay more taxes because I keep hearing we got this new COVID strain that's coming out and it's going to attack the whole country and we're going to be on shutdowns again. And they're already putting masks, mandates and all this. Okay. So me, I want to pay a tax that's higher. So we don't have that. Is that possible? It's not possible, right? But it is possible to tax everybody and, and we cure climate change. So these are the ignorant, ignorant, ignorant things that the, our government plays with all this money and everything. You know, you have these people in Hawaii that went through, I mean, it's horrific over there what they're going through. These communities, one, it's indigenous people, a lot of them that are there, right? Um, And, you know, the government doesn't care about them. I thought you cared about everybody but white people. But all of a sudden, you know, when when people of color or people of uh, the community there need help, you send them seven hundred dollars, and the guy I think from COVID people got more than that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the guy from the the blue and yellow country comes over here and demands billions, right, from us, millions and billions of dollars, and no problem. We'll just you know float you a bunch of money. Well, that's the that's the um, Biden bank. You can't you can't you have to protect the, the Biden, Biden bank, bank bro. right? Well, see, and there becomes a thing. For everybody that's out there, you hate Trump. That's fine. You love Biden. I don't know where you, what screws you have Biden. loose, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Tides like so you love this guy. You have to sit back and think for a second. Okay, are you a racist? And it's, well, no, I'm not a racist. You're a racist because you're a white guy. Okay, fine. So you're going to so tell lame. me so you're going to tell me that these people over here in Hawaii don't deserve. As much, if not more, than what we're giving to a foreign country, all right? Um, what, what in that makes any kind of sense at all? We have people in our own country that need help. You just mentioned a little bit ago, Flint, Michigan, right? Uh, where the derailment was at. All these different places that we've had issues. We just had a hurricane down and, well, that crept up the East Coast from Florida all the way up to, what, North Carolina? North Carolina. I think is where it kind of... Stop it. Don't forget, poor California had uh, Hurricane Hillary, too. (laughs) That was the worst (laughs) hurricane ever. Ever. (laughs) Um, uh, And, you know, what are we doing for those places? Nothing. Well, well, it's different because Russia is going to take over. Well, you know what? If Trump was still in office, Russia wouldn't have done that. Okay. The reason is, is we have a weak individual in office and we have a weak um, administration. Period. I mean, you've got people that are so falsified in their positions. Buttigieg, 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 Booty Judge. He was caught. Did you and say I'll booty? The, booty Judge. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put the video up here um, if I can find it because they might have scrubbed it from the internet. But uh, I know I can find it. And he was seen going to like this speech deal. He pulls up. They let him out of you know a suburban of course. And then what, what do they do? They put him on a bicycle. So he can ride around the corner, you know, to make a grand entrance on a bicycle because he's the 
CNN reporter DJ Judd recorded a video on Wednesday of what appears to be a team of Secret Service agents unloading a bike from the back of their SUV for the Secretary of Transportation to then mount and ride the rest of the way of his commute to the White House. Now, presumably, the location that Buttigieg was getting on the bike was much closer to the White House than if you were to ride it from, say, his house or his office at the Department of Transportation, which is less than three miles from the White House. Buttigieg has been cited riding to and fro around the Capitol ever since he started in the Biden administration, and he has received the fawning media coverage that you would expect. Now, of course, having two armored SUVs follow you on your bike to work does nothing to reduce your carbon footprint. It actually doubles it to the normal person's commute, but at least he looks like he cares, right? So this biking to work is extremely on brand for Buttigieg as a millennial mayor of a college town turned McKinsey consultant, but it also perfectly encapsulates what it means to be a DC bureaucrat. That is, you devise the most complicated, expensive, roundabout way to complete the most simple task, all for the sake of optics. Yeah, and it's just crazy. All these people that go to Davos and all these other places, they're on jets, you know, spending all kinds of these Lear jets and stuff like that that they're using. Um, the average person driving back and forth to work won't use as much in a year as these people do in just their single flights yeah. that they do. So their carbon emissions and all this stuff, if this is what you're truly worried about, the people that are telling you to worry about it are not worried about it themselves. The world's going to flood, right? We've got these people just like Obama in uh, Martha's Vineyard buys a house right on the water where it's going to flood, right? But we've been being told this for how many decades that the ice caps are all going to, they're still there. All right. Um, polar bears are going to be dead. There's actually more polar bears than, than there was. So, I mean, all of these things that they keep talking the about. The earth is flat. Oh, wait, it's, it is. <laughs> oh, God. That's a whole nother episode. Man. <laughs> but you're right. But you're right about that thing, though. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yeah, we, Russia, eh. American people, mm, priority. You know what I mean? America is always number one. It should always be number one. Here's the difference between Biden and Obama and Biden, Obama. Biden and Trump to Trump. America was always number one. There was nothing more important than America and nothing was ever more important. America never would be right because right. whatever he did, he did for America. What did he gain out of it? You know, the guy didn't even want to stay in the white house. He'd go work out of Mar Largo, right? Cause he had yeah. everything there. Um, and you saw, you, you saw the news like I did, Jay, you saw this, you saw this guy old as he is, coming back to the white house at like at three, four in the morning, right. From being up yeah. all night dealing with issues, but no one, no one saw that. Right. All they say, no. all they remember is his conversation on a hot mic in a bus about grabbing someone's crotch. Right. You know, right. And, and that's it. That's a story. But did, did everyone forget how racist and the racist comments that Biden did when he was a Senator? Yeah. We don't remember that. No, that, that didn't happen. He was super, Be, super, he was super racist. racist. He was a liar. Right. He lied about his education, right? And he and he stole other people's speeches. I mean, the worst of the worst, right? And no one, no one wants to bring that up. But oh, you want to bring up something of 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 uh, that Trump said in a hot mic a long time ago between two guys? What are some of the things you and I have said? We can't say it in public, right? But what are some of the things that you and I have said just <laughs> between us? We say we say dumb things. Women yeah. between each other, they say dumb things. Yeah, they, women don't be lying because yeah. I know y'all do. Um, <laughs> I've heard it one time. Um, but anyway, <laughs> th those are the things that they remember, right? It, but th that's the thing. If if you guys, as a, as Americans, as a society, you want to be fair, be fair about everything. If you're gonna remember what Trump did years and years ago, then remember what Biden did years and years ago. Make it fair. Right. Don't just be one sided because you don't like the way he tweets something because he he, he has whittle hands or because his hair is this way or he's orange colored or whatever. I mean, 
Really? I mean, you're you're gonna physically attack someone now. I mean, not physical, but you're gonna attack his their physique, their how they look, because that's all you got. I mean, really? Let's let's look at that. They're desperate Prom now. King. It's a popularity contest. It's not who's who's best suited for the job. It's who's you know who's most or least popular. That's that. But here's the thing: about. popularity is, and you're right. I agree with you 100. percent But it's not about popularity. It's about what you could do for our country. You are a representation right. of the people. You're for the people of the people, right? And and you're gonna and you're gonna do what? You're gonna make our lives easier, better, right? Um, you're gonna make more patriots of the people of America. You're not going to push them away. You're not going to make them work harder. I mean, we people work harder every day just to maintain what they used to be able to maintain at, at not working so hard, right? Now mm-hmm. you got people working two jobs, more hours, whatever the case is, right? And sweat and tears. Oh, I love Biden. He's done so much. What? Right? Your dad's about to die. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, yeah, he, he's what? overworked. You know, ah, people are so, yeah. people are crazy. Yep, it's pretty nuts. Um, so, guys, get out there and and vote this time for my dad uh, again. Yeah, uh, again, I am convinced that like uh, I have a hard time with people that like if somebody's watching and they're like, "Gosh, I don't, I don't know how Trump lost last time," but you know, I didn't actually go out and vote because w- people got so complacent and figured oh, it's a sure thing he's just going to get back in office. That you know, especially the Republicans, they didn't vote and. Um, and every vote some counts. Of the indip- every, every vote, vote counts. counts. Yeah. Don't do absentee the, votes either. Ballots. Don't do that. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today, everybody. I'm Jay, and that's Joe, and this has been Joe and Jay Outspoken. If you had fun or learned anything, do us a favor: like, subscribe, comment, and share. If there's a topic you would like to see us cover in the future, let us know at joeandjproductions.com forward slash ideas. If you would like to help the cause, it can be as small as liking, subscribing. And commenting and that means a lot to us because when you give us, a, give us a thumbs up or even a thumbs down or comment uh it really helps the channel out a lot and it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us out a ton so you can also grab merch from the outspoken store or become one of our patreon members thanks again everyone for tuning in take care of one another <laughs> do better be better and as always <laughs> god, god bless, bless america, america.